Hi there, it's Alison Yates here. I'm going to show you how to colour and make the owl card which is in the June 2018 Parchment Craft magazine. So we're going to start by putting the parchment onto the pattern and we're using a dark sepia pencil number 175 Faber-Castell. I'll list all the pencils for you at the end underneath the video so you can see which ones you're going to need. Keep your pencils very very sharp and I'm colouring in around the outside of the uh, the left eye here. You can see my pencils have had uh, quite a lot of use. I've actually got two pencils joined together there with a bit of sellotape. If you um, straighten off the end of your pencil so that it's flat and then put some tape round it you'll get a lot more use out of your pencils as you can then get them into the pencil sharpener easier. Now I've moved on to the orange and we're going to colour around the pupil with the orange colour there. Try not to press too hard when you're using your pencils as um, if you press too hard you can't put any more layers on. So it's much better to put on several layers, light layers first. Then, um, and also you perhaps use a little circles and then keep going with it like that. Once we've done the orange we're going to put some black on there and continue using the little circle strokes. Need to leave a highlight on the top left corner of the eye. Now we're going to add a little bit of the burnt sienna just around the pupil. It gives a good deep colour around there. Then once you've been around with the burnt sienna, go back over again with the orange. Then grab the dark sepia again and go back around the outside edge of the eye. You can keep adding colours as you need to. Invariably if you add one colour first and then you'll add another one and then you'll need to go back to your first one and make it deeper. So just keep adding light layers as you go. Now add a touch of white into that dark sepia area under the eye. Use a very sharp pencil and also colour in white on the pupil. Now for the other eye you get the black and you colour in that shape and then once you've done the black you get the uh, dark sepia again colour underneath that shape and over the top. Just light strokes again as usual, building up the layers slowly but surely. And then once you've done that you get a white and again you put the white underneath the eye. So now we're moving on to the beak, still using my dark sepia and I've speeded the film up quite considerably here otherwise we'd be here all day looking at me but at least my voice hasn't speeded up so I've gone around the edge of the beak with the um, the dark sepia and then I'm going to get the grey so I've got the very dark grey here cold grey six this is and we're doing the nostrils with that try and make one side the inner side just maybe slightly darker than the outer side then I've got the other grey, the cold grey 3, going all over the beak with that one. And then we go back to the darker grey again and put some patches either side. Mm -hmm. 
And then once you've done that, take the white and whiten up that central area and under the nostrils and also then blend over the rest of it. Dark sepia again, now we're going to make the edge of the beak a lot darker. Now, still with the dark sepia, we're going to start filling in some of the other detail. So we're going around the eyes and then up on the ears. Now across the ears here, just again take it very slowly. Little, little tiny circles I'm doing and I'm filling in the whole of the ear. Gradually what will happen is we'll put more layers on and we'll deepen that area underneath the ear there. So making some lines across the, the forehead and underneath, just sketching in the lines so we know where they are. Then again, still dark sepia, we're putting the patches in over the head now, zigzag strokes, up and down, just adding some random patches. And then just going up and down along that outside edge and up and down on those sort of frown lines, almost they are, aren't they? Tiny little zigzags, just to give the impression of few tiny little feathers. And then one or two little dotty bits around just to give some speckled. And then another coat on that ear. Again, not pressing too hard, but the more coats you give it, of course, the darker it will become. Now we're going to add some brown ochre in between the, uh, the dark sepia on the head there. Again, little zigzag strokes, keeping a pencil really, really sharp just following the direction that the feathers would go. So I'm leaving the centre of the, the head there undone, not, not putting any brown ochre on that. So we're just going round the edges more. And once we've done that, we're going to take the ivory this time and I'm just pressing a fraction firmer so as to smudge and blend the colours together. It's helpful if you have a piece of white card that if you slide that under your parchment and between the pattern, it can help you just to see what you're doing. And then I'm going to go back with the dark sepia again and intensify some of those lines and, and the spots as well, where we've blended them with the ivory. But instead of going over the whole of the spot, I'm just doing really the, the bottom edges, still using the little zigzag up and down strokes, but really just to give them um, a little bit of texture, a little bit of variety, just doing the bottom edges and again intensifying the outside edge. And a little bit more work on the under ear there. You can see that when you put a colour next to it, very often you need to darken whatever it was that you were, you were doing next to it. So in this instance, the ear needs more. But can you see how it blends lighter and lighter as you go towards the bottom edge of those ears? So back to um, dark sepia again, we're going to put the outside edge of the eyes in. So slightly longer strokes here as they 
radiate in towards the eye. Just watch the direction that you're always going in towards the eye, so vary it as you come round. And then we're going to add a little bit more, gradually going to fill up the space between the beak and the outer eyes. Now we're going to add a different colour here. This is the um, it's the Burnt Umber 280. So we're going over your dark sepia with longer strokes. We're going around the edge of the head and just keep filling in as you go, oh, layer upon layer, and just watch the direction of those around the eyes. And now we're adding some of the brown ochre to make more interest and colour. Again, big zigzag strokes. Just beginning to fill in all around the head and the eyes there. Now back to the dark sepia to put in some little tiny lines just to the side of either side of the beak there and to make the, the uh, edge of the beak much darker too so the beak really stands out. So keep going with the dark sepia, a little bit more smaller lines just on the the edge of the eye there to again make it stand out a little bit more. And a bit more work on the ear. I've got the white card still underneath my parchment there so that uh, it helps me to see what I'm doing. Right, we're going to go with the ivory this time now. We're going to press just that little bit firmer so the colours begin to blend together and we fill in all the gaps. So where you've got your zigzag strokes, if you can get in between those and then also a little bit on the top of them so they all blend together and make a nice colour all over. So now we're going to start on the body and similar to the head really with the dark sepia colour. Great big patches this time, long strokes up and down, in between, very random, quite hard to do random, but uh, just do a load of patches and I'm sure you'll be fine. Now we're adding the burnt umber again, the 280, and going over these dark sepia patches. 
long zigzags again. Not always covering all of the dark sepia that you put on first so that it makes it interesting colours. Now we're adding some brown ochre lightly in between those patches. Just zigzag strokes to imitate the, uh, the feathers. It's called a light scribble actually this stroke as well. Just making sure that you get right to the bottom of edge there, maybe a tiny bit over so that you don't get any gaps when we come to do the border later. So carry on filling in. So now I've got the white and we're going to do again short zigzag strokes up and down just under the beak area there. And if you put a bit of black card underneath you can now see, as I zoom in, how um, it shows up the lighter areas much better. So nice sharp white pencil, keep going over that little bit. I've also put some um, ivory in amongst the um, dark sepia just above that area there to the side of the beak. So back to the ivory, now we're going to fill in the rest of the, the body in the lighter areas. So blend all that colour together and that goes all over the body. Okay, so back to the dark sepia again with a very sharp point and we're going to emphasise those patches again just on the bottom areas so that you get some graduation in colour. Okay, so if you haven't already done so, you need to just trace around that inner border before you take your owl off the pattern. Turn him over and now I'm using the white now to emphasise the white areas underneath the beak there. You can see I've done half and uh, one half is certainly brighter than the other half. So the nice thing about using parchment is you've got two sides to it. You can add a different colour on the back as well. Sometimes on leaves and things, I perhaps put a bit of red on the back to um, to give the the, the red colour. A um, little bit of white, of course, on the beak there and the eye and the pupil. Anywhere you want to emphasise the white colour. Now what I'm doing is with the orange, I'm putting some of the orange around the outside edge and also a little bit of that um, brown ochre colour. So use your pencils on the side so that they don't dig in and then you get a little bit of your blending medium, the zest it, and with a tissue just put a little tiny bit on and rub it round and round and round until you get a nice blended edge. I like to put my blending solution into a pot with a sponge in because then I can just have as much or a little as I need just by pressing it lightly or by sort of pressing heavily. Keep your the over um, tissue nice and flat onto the paper and then you should end up with a lovely smooth area. Now 
So now I've attached the owl to my bold straight grid face up to so the right side up and I'm perforating every hole on the white line that goes around. And then once you've done that, take it off the grid and then with your two needle tool, I'm using a bold two needle tool here to continue the theme of the bold needle, um, the bold grid, perforate around the scalloped or curved edges. Then it's time to snip it out. So with your parchment scissors or snips, cut between each pair of holes. Hold your scissors down flat with the paper and try and cut that nice little pico edge. Okay, so I've traced now on a scrap of parchment 12 of the feathers. And on the back there, I'm now rubbing some of the brown ochre colour which we will then blend with the blending solution. Now with a scriber you want to emboss the feathers, so align up the centre and then just emboss a lot of little lines like that. Then we need to cut them out. If you cut them out with a small pair of scissors, your parchment scissors are ideal. So just cut around the outside edge. And then if you get the point of your scissors and very, very close together, just snip. Can you see how the little bits are coming out? So they're looking a little bit more feather-like ever so ever so close together if you can do it. it. takes a bit of practice actually. I had to do a couple just to get back into the practice of doing them again. Flip it over, you'll find that there's a better way of, you'll find a more comfortable way of doing it yourself. Sometimes it's better this way or sometimes you might be better off cutting in the other direction. But have a little practice first. Then once you've done that you just with your fingers you can just fluff up, fluff up the edges a little bit and they'll be ready for the next stage. So now I've glued my owl onto the green backing card with a tiny little bit of PVA glue in the corners. So we're going to cover up the corners with some feathers so you can put a tiny bit of glue underneath each corner. Now I've got some silicon glue and I put a blob onto the corner and I'm just going to position three feathers in each corner one either side like that, spread them out and then the third one will go in the centre. So just repeat the uh, putting the feathers on on the other three corners. Then you need to mount that onto a mat of brown card and finally onto a folded white card. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, look forward to keep bringing you more videos in the near future. Thank you.